Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Mountain View, California for theCUBE's coverage of Cisco DevNet Creates. A small, intimate event where we're bringing the cloud native creation world with the DevNet community within Cisco, and of course, building applications, programming networks, that's the theme. I'm John Furrier, your host. Our next guest is Daryl Daryl Sladden, Senior Technical Product Manager at Cisco, 20 year veteran, built voice over IP systems. He's a coder, he's a builder, he's a creator. Great to see you, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, I'm glad to be here. And I you're being on the, the cube. You're on the cube. <laughs> because. <laughs> and the trivia behind that, share the context. You had a product, you built yes, one. Yes, the, the first uh, product management job at Cisco was at building the Cisco Unified Border Element. And of course, that came, became the cube. So anytime you mention cube inside of Cisco, that's going to be my product. The <laughs> renaissance within Cisco, the cube is back and we're embedded in there. That's of course, right. we're breaking all the borders down, getting the data. Tell us what's going on in your world. Obviously, you've seen a lot of waves. I mean, voice over IP that you were involved in, yeah. that took the old PBX right. telephone, got digital, created massive innovation. That's an inflection point moment. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a few of those big waves happening now. One of them is an architectural change around IOT, Wi-Fi 6, 5G, cloud computing, all coming together. This is an interesting opportunity. What's your focus? Where do you fit into all that? Yeah, what, where I fit in is this is a massive change. And one of the problem sets that hasn't been solved yet is how do I understand where I am indoors? There's been great solutions that have been uh, unlock huge with values with the GPS system outdoors. You always know where you are on ways to find out exactly the right. I'm always amazed at how accurate they are and how long it's going to take me to get to the computer <laughs> museum. But how do I know, once I've got into the museum, that the cube is in the upstairs in the back corner? Uh, you know, that's, yeah. where, that's where we need to solve that problem. And I think we're at the crux of that. Waze is a great example because one of the things I'm amazed by with Waze is how fast they report the incidents that are going on. It's as if people are so actively rabid of adding, inputting the data. You got data junkies adding it. And there's been some side effects. The side streets are always clogged. <laughs> so Police are not, always know where that is. So in physical <laughs> locations where Wi-Fi 6, for instance, comes out, yeah. you're going to have new capabilities in bandwidth and throughput in coverage areas, these dense areas. It's going to create a navigation opportunity for either machines to machines, machines to humans, humans to machines, humans to humans within a physical construct. Yeah. What is the, the what, how do you see that evolving, use cases, what's the pattern? Right. What, what I really see evolving is taking advantage of some of the capabilities that have already existed in Wi-Fi, meaning ranging from individual APs, but some of the new things that are coming with, with Wi-Fi 6 is the Wi-Fi 6 creates a great baseline, but there are new things where 802.11mc, for example, which is an extension of Wi-Fi 6, has what's called fine timing measurement. I can now, with these super accurate chipsets, know the speed of light is about um, one nanosecond to go about three feet. If I have an accurate clock, now I can know how far I am from the APs, yeah. and I can solve that in indoor locations. So, so a lot of a physics lot of involved. Physics involved. All right, so what products are you working on now to make all this happen? Take us through some of the things that are out there that you've got your fingers on. Yeah, so what I'm working on is a new, is our Cisco's new location platform. It's called Cisco DNA Spaces. And so what we're, uh, what we're focusing on is digitizing that indoor space. So people spend most of their economic activity are indoors, whether it's in a hotel where they're selling the rooms or a restaurant where they're selling food inside the spaces, but what goes on in that physical space? Um, people don't have that same level of knowledge that you do on the web, right? When I go to a web page and I shop for outdoor furniture, the next two weeks I'm followed by <laughs> ads about outdoor furniture, but if I go to Home Depot and I spend an hour in the outdoor furniture aisle, they don't know about that. Now, it allows you to digitize that indoor space and provide that context for other types of applications. So the value, I mean, I'm not saying they're gonna, now they're going to know you actually shopped at Home Depot, now your ads go to Home Depot. <laughs> but the value is not so much in the advertising, it's really in the efficiencies around work, play, um, office. These are the things that are going to be impacted because, you know, take healthcare for instance, manufacturing, yeah. um, how people do work, how services are delivered. Just like in the consumer side, we all relate to the iPhone days when, oh my God, I can have GPS on a phone, and things yeah. now, I do a mashup on a Google map. Right. Are you saying the same thing for buildings? We're going to import, you're going to import like architectural drawings? How do you get all this built out? What's the playbook? Yeah, the, the playbook really will be the, at starting at the larger buildings that will be uh, put into Google Maps or put into other places where I can start to get really accurate indoor locations and then never losing things, right? Be able to know where you are indoors, 
uh, being able to always find your stuff, not only um, where you are, but maybe I put a tag on some of my assets and I always know where they are. The idea of um, nurses becoming more efficient because they're going to know where that wheelchair is if I need to assign a, if I need to find a wheelchair to move to move a patient out of an office. All of these things just become a little bit more efficient, but that just builds on a huge scale when that happens at scale. Daryl, talk about the impact of this because you deploy you built and deployed disruptive technology in the past. For the folks watching, whether it's an enterprise architect or a CIO or a CEO or facilities manager, whoever, what is the impact of these new location-based services? to their business, how should they be thinking about it, um, holistically, yeah. what's so, your view? So what, what my real view is that you want to look at it from a platform. So you're not going to have one company, we're even at Cisco, we're not going to solve every application. But what you do want to do is build a platform that's extensible, right? So we will take in data from multiple sources, whether it be APs or, um, or video cameras, other things, create a platform that normalizes that location and then opens that up. Really, that's what, what happened as the mainframes transitioned to, to client server computing. Once you start breaking things up, that's really the value. And so I think the uh, CIOs and architects out there shouldn't be looking at point products as much as understanding that a location platform will help them unlock the value moving forward. Talk about the data. How is the data traversing through this? Because obviously you mentioned connecting things like cameras and other things, where well, it could be medical equipment, could be anything. IOT is going to be a tsunami of, of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, there's applications that's going to create a lot of opportunity. Where, where, how should I think about the data flow um, and the role of machine learning and data and all this? Is that going to be a key part of this? Uh, absolutely, the way that we're looking at it is there's kind of two groups. There's the ones that are all in on the cloud and we are offering this as a software, as a subscription service. So you buy it on a, on a subscription basis and you let Cisco under, uh, deal with the problems. Of course, with a, with a regulated environment of access to the data and backing it up and restoring it and making sure uh, it's um, uh, well curated. Uh, or you can decide, yeah, I want to run it on premises. If you run it on prem, you have to understand you're going to have to deal with those same problems of backup. Um, uh, the data will get really large as you start to collect more and more location. And how are you going to best um, extract value from that data? So I think you, you won't really want to look at that this is something that's going to continue to expand, and do I want to make that a core competence by running it myself, or maybe turn that over to cloud So service. in terms of what's, a, what's, a, a, what's real and what's not real, or, or let's, so what's coming and what's real today, so you mentioned uh, there's some location services as a SaaS, is talk about what's available now from a custom, your customer standpoint. Yeah. What can they get going on and what's coming around the corner? Yeah, so what, what they can get going on today is, is that location services, uh, Cisco DNA Spaces. So if you go to CiscoDNAspaces.com, uh, there's free trials available. It's a, it's a great sort of application. But more importantly, it provides you that initial start, right? What's coming is more and more applications that take advantage of that, right? We've had a, a great one for things like uh, student success, so that you know a student is inside of a classroom, and then that um, you, uh, if he doesn't come up to class for a couple days in a row, oh, maybe he needs uh, counseling, maybe his car broke down. You can start to do these really interesting student success applications as an example of a vertical. So the vertical applications are starting to really proliferate, but what's available today is the platform. So you see verticals really booming yeah, on I this. They're going to take advantage of it. Of All right, so just kind of zoom out and put your industry hat on, not your Cisco hat. Yeah. Uh, when you, when you see, look at Wi-Fi and 5G or other technologies that are out there, what's the big movement, what's, what moves the ball down the field the most? Is it going to be Wi-Fi and 5G? Because it seems like, you know, the inch by inch, unified communication seems stalled, now it's got an uplift with cloud, with data, or more uh, great user experiences. SD-WAN's been around for a long time and getting a re resurgence. I mean, campus networking has been around for a long, <laughs> long time. I mean, people go to stadiums, want to do Instagram and do videos. Right. What's the big technology lever here? What's the big, Tail, tailwind for, for location-based and building stuff. So I, I, what, I, what I start to see uh, for this is improvement standards and improving accuracy, right? Until you, you get to that point where it's reliable and replaceable and you know, I can really depend on it, uh, it's all a niche product. And I think that's been happening for literally in the last eight years in this industry. There's lots of niche examples of yeah. things that have been successful, but it hasn't exploded. Until you build that platform where I can absolutely, with reliability, say this device is at this point at this time, yeah. uh, then you can start to really explode. The timing and the really throughput to down. your point earlier. Yeah. Okay, thoughts on DevNet, just to wrap oh, up. Yeah. What's here going on, on the show here, DevNet Create. Susie did a good job of bringing communities together. A lot of co-creation, they're creating new things, this new application environment, programmable. 
What's your thoughts on Yeah, I love being around some of the smartest people in the world here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, humbling us to be able to, to talk to some of these guys. But, but I do think that really creates the, the community that uh, teaches everything from little things, like we learned about, a, I learned a great new little API trick that, that I hadn't learned, and maybe I taught some people some, some of the stuff that we're doing about streaming APIs. What I really like about this is all these small little uh, interactions build something really yeah. big. And you build APIs into all the products, that's only going to create more enablement, yes. more creativity, the creativity's flowing, big right. time. Daryl, thanks for coming on. Well, Great thank to you see so you. Thanks to Cube, Cube fan. <laughs> all right. Author of the product called The Cube at Cisco back in the day. <laughs> I'm John Furrier, back with more live coverage after this short break.